G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. It's Jesse here and today I'm gonna to be doing another tier maker video. This time I'm gonna be ranking the teams based on how well I think they did at the recent trade period. Now, if you haven't seen it already, Busher and I got together during the week and did True Footy Podcast 40, in which we did an hour and a half analyzing the trade period and we went through each team team by team and rated them on how well we think they did. So in this video, I'm gonna be doing a much more uh, shorter condensed version of that where I'll be ranking them based on how well I think they did. If after watching this video, you feel like you'd like a little bit more detail on the reasonings behind my rankings, you should definitely go check out that podcast. You can find it right here on the True Footy YouTube channel. Also, just before we get started into this video, guys, I do just have to plug my other channel, Jesse Thomas. During the week, I did a West Coast Eagles season review for 2019. So all the Eagles fans out there should go to that channel. First of all, hit subscribe and then check out my review and let me know in the comments what you think because I'm going to be doing a fair bit of Eagles centric stuff on that channel. But anyway, let's get into these rankings. Like I said, guys, I'm going to be using tier maker and I'm going to be ranking the teams based on a variety of different factors. It won't just be as simple as how much did this team improve after the trade period. It's going to be also looking at how productive were they in terms of achieving their goals and perhaps also how did they handle uh, a bad situation, for instance, maybe a key player leaving the club. How good were they at turning that into a positive? So without further ado, let's have a look at these rankings. So I've gone with the five different categories, uh, but I've renamed them. I'm going to have excellent up the top, followed by great, productive. So productive will be, you know, nothing too spectacular, but they, they added some values to their list. They were productive in, you know, maybe achieving a goal or two. Indifferent is sort of that they didn't have necessarily a bad trade period. It wasn't necessarily a net negative, but they didn't really go too far to achieving their goals either. And then down the bottom is poor. So um, let's get into it, guys. So like I always like to do in a tier maker, I'm going to try and fill each of the categories with one team each before eventually moving on to the other teams just so we have a bit of a framework going. So one team that I think had an excellent trade period is Geelong. Now, I know that's going to be sound a bit weird at first because they lost Tim Kelly, who's maybe a top 10 player in the competition this year. But the way they got um, four, they got four draft picks from West Coast, really. They got four, uh, two second rounders and two first rounders for Tim Kelly. The Cats are actually going to have two firsts this year, two seconds this year, and then two firsts next year as well, if I'm not mistaken. So in terms of their talent regeneration, they're in a pretty good spot on the back of that. And uh, a team that I think was quite poor was Carlton. It may seem harsh. Now, the only trade that was meaningful that they got in was Eddie Betts for a fourth rounder, future fourth rounder, I think it was. After the listing Daisy Thomas, uh, you know, I thought they were going to, you know, save a bit of money to, you know, bring in someone like Papley or Jack Martin. They were highly touted to, to get, and obviously they kind of bottled the Jack Martin deal, use uncontracted player. We'll still wait and see what happens when he moves into, whether he moves into the PSD and they still get him. That might turn around their rating for me, but um, overall to not improve the best 22 other than bets, I think was a bit of a swing and a miss for the Blues. In terms of an indifferent off season, I will say Collingwood. They are obviously a little bit hamstrung having gotten beams last year, both in terms of salary cap um, but in draft picks as well, they had no first rounder. So all they could really do was move around some money. They got rid of Aish, brought in Darcy Cameron. So productive in a sense, but largely indifferent, I would rate them. I think Melbourne had a great off season. So they hold currently two picks in the top eight. They brought in Tomlinson and Ed Langdon. Um, and that's two best 22 players. So they're actually in a really good spot. Now they did trade next year's first, um, which is why they're not excellent. That could bite them, but if they back themselves to improve, it could turn out to be a really good deal. I'm gonna have Adelaide in productive. Now, they obviously had a miss, mass exodus to so trying to get save a bit of money. They, I think it was six players from around about their best 25, they cut loose. So a lot of money to potentially go for big fish in the next couple of years, like Brody Grundy. Good thing is, I don't think they've decreased or like really weakened too much their best 22. They're obviously gonna play a lot of youth in the coming years. However, they didn't really improve their draft position that much, which is why I only have them in productive. They were productive in sort of moving towards a goal, but I wouldn't say they had a great trade period by any means necessarily. Essendon, I will have in the indifferent group. They pretty much spent their whole trade period trying to hold on to Orazio and Danaher, and they were successful in that. They didn't really get any other meaningful deals done. It wasn't really too much to write home about. Hawthorne were productive, I would say. Uh, picked up Patton and Frost on the cheap. They needed some bookends to reinforce their key position stocks. And they hold pick 11, which I'm told by Michael, friend of the channel, that is their first 
well, their highest draft pick since 2006, which is absolutely incredible. So, um, yeah, no, I'd say productive in plugging a few list holes, but I think they're going to obviously look at the draft this year. Richmond, uh, our premiers, indifferent. I'm kind of just picking teams randomly here. They'd be very happy with their list is out. They've lost a couple of depth, uh, best 22 players. Uh, Brandon Ellis went to Gold Coast, and, um, of course, Dan Butler went to the Saints. So, all in all, though, for where they're at, I don't think they really needed to do much more. Fremantle, I think we're great. And the reason is, despite losing Brad Hill, who's a top three player at the club, I think they were fairly productive in trying to turn that into a good situation. So they hold two top 10 picks this year. Blake Akers, I think, is a really talented player. I think he was a little bit underdeveloped at the Saints. Not necessarily through their own fault. Um, I think they played him in the wrong position for a start. He had his injury troubles, but I reckon he will blossom and become a good player for the Dockers. And I think with this draft having a lot of WA talent, Frio having high picks is um, a good position to be in. Gold Coast were great as well. The fact that they uh, brought in a number of best 22 players, Brandon Ellis, Hugh Greenwood, uh, even Zach Smith returns to the club. I know he's not necessarily, he won't even be first ruck there, but I think just to have players, mature players coming in to add depth, um, and they've and they've held on to pick one and two, I'd say they would be very happy with where they're at. St Kilda, I would say excellent. Now they had Akers uh, leave the club, who, you know, most people probably wouldn't rate externally anyway. Jack Stephen was always going to leave through his mental health issues. Um, he's a great player. That is a big loss, but he's he is 30, and it was just about time to for him to move on anyway for personal reasons. So for them to bring in five best 22 players, including Dougal Howard, Paddy Ryder, Dan Butler, Brad Hill, and i um, forgetting the fifth one off the top of my head, but it, it'll come to me. I'm sure someone will let me know in the comments. But anyway, it was five best 22 players to a side that has historically struggled to land big fish players. Uh, Zach Jones, thank you. That was what it was. Um, Five best 22 players and, uh, you know, for them to reinforce their 22 is something they really needed. Um, I think they made the best of a bad situation. They also hold next year's first still. So, all in all, very productive. I'm using that word a lot. The Giants, I will say, were a little bit indifferent. Um, they got Jacobs in basically for free. He's a free agent. However, they lost Tomlinson through a free agency. Patton and um, Bonner left the club as well. So... All in all, kind of a net negative. I think they they had a real list need for a Ruckman, so that is good. Um, I don't think I'd rate it poor because I don't think they're really going to miss the three players that left, maybe Tomlinson. But overall, I'll just say indifferent. They didn't really achieve anything too successful other than clearing a bit of salary cap, which they'll need in the coming years. Sydney, I, would, I, I was thinking indifferent or poor. I'm actually going to say poor here because at the end of the day, they've just lost uh, Darcy Cameron, uh, who's not a big loss, but uh, Darcy Cameron and Zach Jones. Um, and then they've held on to Papley and brought in Lewis Taylor. Also failed to get Danaher. I don't rate him too hard, harshly for failing to get Danaher. It was kind of a free swing. He was a contracted player. But all in all, I think they're actually, their list actually went backwards this, this offseason. So um, you'd have to say it was kind of a bit poor. But they will hold a strong draft position, which they kind of need. My boys, the Eagles, I would say, did great. Obviously brought in the biggest fish of this trade period. Unfortunately, they sold the absolute farm for him. They played, trade four draft picks, um, two first and two seconds. <laughs> um, so they're going to have to bet on themselves, obviously, to push up the ladder so those picks are late picks. Obviously, if they bottle it next year, they could end up giving a top 10 pick away to Geelong. Overall, though, for a list that is going to be challenging for a premiership, they've strengthened with um, one of the best, well, probably the best player on the market this year. Um, that's a big win, really. The Bulldogs, I think, were great as well. Um, they, I feel like they needed strengthening at either end, a bit like Hawthorne. Alex Keith, they got for a bit of a bargain. Josh Bruce as well. Pretty uh, cheap options. And they held on to pick 13, which was a clear strategy for them as well. So um, they're going to keep regenerating through the draft. But also, they've strengthened at either end. I think that was very, very good for them. The Lions uh, were good. I would say productive. They brought in Cam Ellis, Yolman, uh, Grant Birchall, and Callum Archie. None of those names are really spectacular. Obviously, Birchall's a great player, but he kind of just replaces Hodge as that experienced defender. Ellis Yolman adds a big body, and they th I think they'll need that midfield depth going into next year, where I I've said it before, but I think they unlikely to have the same injury run they did this year so they'll need a bit of depth and Archie was a former former first rounder don't necessarily think he's going to be a world beater but um you know why not roll the dice on some um untapped potential who uh, who was kind of languishing a little bit at Gold Coast. North Melbourne I would say productive as well I've talked about this on the podcast in a bit more depth but they uh they probably I was surprised they weren't really making any 
real moves and they traded away their first round of this year. Now on points and stuff, they've probably they've probably won that trade with Melbourne. Um, they've traded pick eight this year for a second rounder and then next year's first for Melbourne. So they're gonna hold a really strong draft position next year. And I thought, you know, for them to have no first rounder this year and no players coming in, that would be a bit hard to take for their fans. However, they managed to sign Bonnar with one of the last deals. Bonner um, was basically for free and he was a first rounder two years ago. So um, whatever you think of Bonner, that was still a pretty good deal. So I'd say it was productive for North Melbourne. Port Adelaide, I would say fairly indifferent, to be honest. They, uh, they didn't really land anyone of note. They tried to go for a Razio, um, which obviously didn't quite pan out. Uh, Paddy Ryder, they gave away for basically downgrading 10 to 12. And then they gave away Dougal Howard, who they probably didn't really need to trade for a late first rounder. And I think a lot of the fans, including the pair, a little bit miffed at how that transpired. So um, while they hold three picks in the top 29 this year at the moment and two picks in the top 18 um, and they need to keep regenerating through the draft, I think losing a player like Dougal, who I think they were going to play forward anyway going forward, is a bit of a blow. It's a bit of a backward step, I think, because what are the chances you're going to draft a player necessarily as good as Dougal Howe with pick 18? It's always a risk and he was only 23. So all in all, not a great off-season there for Port. Um, however... If they have another draft like they did last year, they'll be very, very happy. So there you go, guys. That is my tier maker. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, like I said, if you want to hear a little bit more detail about my thoughts on how everyone went, go check out True Footy Podcast 40. I think it's the very last video we did on the True Footy YouTube channel. Like I said at the start of the video, guys, go check out my West Coast Eagles season review, especially if you're an Eagles fan, on the Jesse Thomas channel. Go and subscribe. You'd be really helping me out. Uh, on this channel, we've got a couple of videos coming up soon. I'm going to do a new Classic Games in 2019 video. Um, not last year, I did a 2018 one. It was very successful. So I'm going to definitely do that again. And a new video I just thought of today, all the wacky and weird results from 2019 retrospectively. I'm going to do a video on that as well. So stay tuned for that. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe. You'd be really helping me out, like I've said a few times, but I really mean it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all very soon somewhere on YouTube. Cheers.